Hello everyone, my name is Alex Gomez and on today's video I'm going to show you my process of converting an old portrait into a cartoon stylized character. This is a picture from Edgar Allan Poe. So if you're new to this channel, please comment, like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when I post a video every Friday. Let's get to it. So when I started doing this character, something that I had to pay attention to it is the representation and shapes and forms of uh, from our uh, a reference picture. So if you see what are the facial features that mostly represent this character, and you start to break it out, like for example, the first the, the thing that I notice the most is the big forehead. The second thing that I notice is the big bags underneath the eyes and the third thing is the mouth and kind of like it has like a little bit of a M shaped mouth below the mustache and those are kind of like a, the iconic things besides the crazy hair that, that is gonna make this part of a creation of a cartoon character a very more accurate in the sense that it's going to achieve some level of likeness and exaggeration in our piece of art. So make sure that you guys pay attention to every facial feature of it, like the eyes, nose, mouth, so you can nail this, uh, this likeness of this character. and. Uh, Make sure that the, 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 it's a little bit of exaggeration in terms of uh, bigger eyes, a small nose, a small chin, and uh, also to give that uh, touch of stylizedness, make sure that those lines are really sharp. Uh, because what I tried to do here was trying to capture the essence of this character. And this is an old picture, like uh, his, uh, facial expression, no facial expression, but yeah, his uh, facial features are definitely asymmetric. So this is one point. The second point, the forehead, third point, the mustache and the mouth, and kind of like the smirk, kind of like smile that has, even though in this time, uh, in that time of Alan Poe, when they used to take uh, portraits, they didn't used to smile at all. I don't know why, I think there's some videos on YouTube that say why, but I don't know. When you are uh, kind of like uh, sculpting and trying to add those lines and where the features are, are going, the eyes, the mouth, make sure that you always turn around the camera because you, you can think about the lines, but you have to think also about the form. You know, when you rotate the camera, you're seeing like a how big or how pronounced the cheekbones are or how flat the nose is even though if you have it in a front view or a side view you don't have that perception of form until you start rotating your camera so make sure you guys are doing that where you're sculpting from a photo reference or in any case any other kind of sculpting for the head in this piece, I found that was super interesting. It was uh, really kind of like not messy, but in a way kind of like a shaggy head and, 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 and quite long. And I thought that I can enhance a lot uh, his uh, uh, features of uh, having like that uh, big forehead, enhancing as well and make it like a, like a, a bit bigger the hair that you guys gonna watch uh, later on on the video that is gonna accentuate that kind of like a cartoony feeling to it and the same for I did for the eyes as well so you can see like in the picture like his eyes had like a those big bags like if you haven't slept for a while and so that's another thing that that I decide to accentuate as well and definitely like I start like a getting those shapes a little bit more pronounced and when I uh, start adding more details. Definitely like adding some color to your piece, it helps a lot because it's gonna uh, tell you more about your proportions and how your shapes and 
and how everything is coming along together. So I think it's important to do that as well. Um, if you see what I'm doing here, it's just simple, simple shapes and complicating with too many details. Um, definitely like I just kind of like I keep it sharp and simple. At this point of my process is when I decide to start breaking symmetry and start adding that facial expression to it. So instead of uh, me like kind of like a Siri measure, I'm having like a, not that much time to do it. So I'm not doing Siri measure. I'm just decimating my models and bring the color information to Maya to do the renders. And um, I think it's a little bit faster for this kind of process that I do because this uh, any they're not gonna be used for animation or anything like that. So it doesn't need to be an excellent topology to it. So yeah, after I uh, break symmetry. Uh, to kind of like uh, keep the essence of that expression of that uh, I, uh, a symmetry face that Edgar Allan Poe has in this uh, portrait, I decided like uh, to do some poly paint, add, add some um, dark spots underneath the eyes because that's con kind of like a grab more the attention of the um, of the piece because as you guys can see the those baggy eyes can, or droopy eyes is kind of like a sign of tiredness so I just decided to just kind of like get those uh, dark spots in there and also decided to make that uh, messy a little bit her, uh, of her but uh, if you guys can see it uh, there's still some things that I need to work on in here like uh, in this piece like like the, it still looks like a cartoony and stylized piece, but there's something missing and it's the touch of exaggeration. When you add a little bit more of that exaggeration can bring your piece to a next level, I find. Because in that exaggeration is where you're gonna find where the story of the picture of the or, or the cartoon or caricature that you're creating is, is, is where it's at, you know, like I, it, it, that, that story is, is being like a, here Edgar Allan Poe, like taking that picture all serious, but still kind of like a, making that uh, smirk face. I think that is the, how you, you call it. Uh, too much exaggeration, I, I will say, it will cancel out the story, it will cancel out, uh, uh, you know, it, it will be too much. I think like a little bit of exaggeration, it's it's good as long as it keeps acc accordance with all your shapes. If you add it like too much, it's kind of like a, it, it's just gonna, gonna mix it up. Like if you guys have like hot sauce, if you put a little bit of hot sauce, it's good. Like you're still tasting the food, but when you put a lot of hot sauce, all you can taste is hot sauce. So it kind of like it, it gives out the, the taste of it. So it's, it's the same in, in this case. Like uh, I see the exaggeration part in the forehead, so I just make it way bigger, but not as big that it's gonna be like a more redundant. So it's still, it gives that exaggeration and, and complemented with a small chin and a small mouth and a big forehead, just a complementation. If I start exaggerating too much, I'm gonna lose the essence of uh, of uh, coming up with this, uh, with, with a better uh, uh, proportional and a better balanced piece. Because one of the things that I, that, I, that you have to have uh, in mind uh, and have to know the differences between uh, exaggeration and representation when you're representing something it's kind of like a, you are doing the same the, the, the same as the image you know you're representing that in your style but you're representing but once you you add that exaggeration you're adding your style as well you know and you're adding more stylized I find like for example like the stylized characters that you see like on Instagram or social media or uh, in the other youtubers that make these kind of videos you see that the like that exaggeration happened with the like big eyes this the style a small chin the the shape of the face is a little bit different than kind of like a normal human face and uh, that's something that, that there is a difference between styles there's the, the Disney style and there's the stylized style kind of like a cyberpunk style that there's a like in the video game or um, Overwatch uh, stylized characters. 
So make sure that you're picking one and, and deciding which one are you going with. Is this uh, the, the sliced version of a kind of like Disney version, a sliced version of a watch version kind of thing. So to finish this video, I just want to say like a first represent, then exaggerate. And it's so easy to do with these pieces uh, as a digital sculptor instead of a drawing because you have to draw like represent exaggerate at the same time here we can just represent and then exaggerate because we're just working with clay so it's way easier for uh, for us to do that so so let me know what you guys think about this process uh, let, let me know if uh, this video was useful for you guys uh, you, I definitely like enjoy a lot doing this kind of work, this kind of re representation and, and, and cartoonish. Uh, I'll be doing more of this stuff, uh, of these studies. So if you're interested in this kind of style, just let me know. If you're interested in this kind of video, just leave it on the comment. Please share, watch, uh, subscribe, like, and if you're new here to this channel, I will appreciate a lot if you subscribe and hit the notification bell. It will help me a lot so I can keep creating more content like this and also some, some more tutorials. So take care guys, keep creating and have an amazing weekend. See you then.